Welcome to the She Rise Podcast. I'm your host, Jaya Rose, a spiritual lifestyle and business mentor, and I am here to help ambitious, highly sensitive women just like you and me embody unshakable confidence in your gifts and create a scalable business that nourishes you and gives you the freedom lifestyle your soul craves. Ready? Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to the third season of the She Rise podcast. I am so excited, and I'm going to kick it off with a really fun topic all about how and why to own your spiritual zone of genius and truly the power in it. I see so many gifted women walking around, specifically, I don't know if they're walking, but they're in the online space and just have this magic and these gifts and such an amazing ability to help people and they're hiding and not showing up and not knowing fully how to show up because there's so many different messages around how to be successful or how to grow an online business. And it's something that fires me up a lot. And of course, it's because I can relate. I get it. One of the things that has helped me more than anything really in the online space to actually fully go all in on me and what I am here to do and on my purpose has been to own my power and my spiritual zone of genius. And I don't know, I wanted to start by telling you a little story because I'm wondering if you're going to relate to this. But when I was 26, I had a six-year-old daughter and I was a single mom. I had gone through a divorce two years prior and I sort of just woke up to this, oh my gosh, I'm 26 with a six-year-old. And I looked around and I noticed that my friends from high school had gone to college and they had found these careers and I just questioned myself and thought, what are you gonna do? You know, almost that like, what are you gonna do when you grow up question. And I, took a look at my life and I took a look at what was important to me and what I was naturally good at. And I just, I thought, you know, Jaya, you've got to find something that really fits your natural abilities. I knew I wasn't going to go back to school. Um, School was really hard for me. I knew that I wanted to help people. And this is the kicker, that people like to talk to me. I knew that I was really good at getting people to open up and feel really comfortable in sharing their truth with me. And I thought, okay, well, I could either be a personal trainer or a hairdresser. (laughs) And I was like, well, I like working out. I was a belly dancer at the time and I actually trained a martial art uh, called capoeira. And I was like, well, I love working out myself, so I'm sure I could help other people. And it's literally how I picked my career is on the basis that people liked to talk to me. Now, this actually worked out for me. I ended up being a personal trainer for 12 years. But just a few years in, about four years in, I found myself really wanting to help people on a deeper level, but I just didn't have the confidence, to be honest. I thought that, well, this is good enough. You know, I'm helping people, I'm making good enough money, I was working for myself, like, you know, why should I want more? And yet, I learned about life coaching. It was kind of just as it got started, I think. This was, hmm, let me date myself here, uh, about 13 years ago. And one of the things that I heard about it was like, you can help people, it's kind of like being a therapist but you don't have to go and, you know, become a therapist. And I was like, that sounds exactly. If I would have known about life coaching, that would have been in the mix, right? Um, Hairdresser, personal trainer, life coach. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much the qualification that people like to talk to me works. Um, But at this point, I already had, you know, something that I was good at. Yet I still felt the call. So I ended up taking a life coaching certification and incorporating it into my personal training. So over the next eight years, I 
really just became a really awesome personal trainer. <laughs> like I became the personal trainer that people stayed with for five years that they came twice a week, every week. And not only, you know, did they improve their physical health, they also felt really safe and comfortable to talk to me. And I got to practice that piece that I always really wanted to do. Now, fine and dandy, right? Maybe you're thinking, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, do what you're good at and pepper in this other thing. And yeah, kind of, but I reached a point in my life where I wanted to do what I really wanted to do. And the only reason that I wasn't only pursuing life coaching was because I was afraid. It was because, and I literally, I quote myself, I used to say, well, personal training is my bread and butter, but I really love life coaching. And I look back at that woman who didn't believe in her gifts enough to go all in. She didn't think that what her natural God-given gifts were, were enough to support herself and create a business. And it, it hurts my heart. Like I think about that part of myself and then I think about all of the women who I help in She Rise Business School. I think about all the women I've helped over the last four years in my online business. And there is this common theme of, yeah, deep down, I can know what I'm really good at. Like deep down, I can know, yeah, that's super powerful. And this ability to have people talk to me is such a gift. And it has created, you know, success on every level. And so why, and I want you to start to question yourself on this, why would it not be good enough to do what I really want to do? Like, why would there be a limitation? And when I found the online space four and a half years ago, I saw a video of Marie Forleo and she was talking about her B-school And she was saying that if you have a gift and you're able to help people and you're not sharing it and screaming it from the rooftops, that you're actually stealing from those people. And I watched her in her fancy room with her cute outfit and her perfect hair and her total confidence in her message. I can remember sitting on my couch with the with the laptop on my lap, just with her staring at me. Like I felt like she was talking to only me. And it hit me so hard because I knew, I knew that I had more. I knew that there was this unexpressed part of me that wanted to come out, that was meant to come out. And yet this other part of me just let fear play small. Just let fear be the leader. Oh, goodness. So I tell you this story because it really is the spiritual zone of genius. And then something else I teach in my business school is called innate magic. And spiritual zone of genius is the foundation for moving into only focusing on your innate magic and really, really putting that at the forefront so that you can be your fullest expression and honor that. And be in your power so deeply that people are magnetized because of just who you are. Now, the spiritual zone of genius is a really cool part of this because it's recognizing that you have a way that you function in the world, a way of being and a way of expressing yourself that is really natural to you. So it's like your natural way of being. And when you actually realize this and when you learn about what your spiritual zone of genius is, you get to take this into consideration because we live in a very noisy world. And if you are allowing other people's guidance and influence to come into your life and dictate the way that you do things, you know, from my own experience being a highly sensitive 
ambitious woman, that never works. It never works because I always have to go back to the drawing board and say, yeah, but what's my deepest truth? What's my fullest expression? And listen, I sit here with a lot more story I could share with you about thinking that I had to do it someone else's way. And then finally discovering that when I do it my way, that when I honor me and my genius and my magic, then I, I set myself free. I set myself free even if I didn't make any money. Even if I didn't, because I can tell you this, making a ton of money and having beautiful things does nothing for me if I'm not feeling whole and complete and like I am actually doing what I'm meant to do here on this earth. And that's really what I've faced to where I ended up discovering these three archetypes and I call them your spiritual zone of genius. And... Maybe you've taken the quiz already and that's why you're listening to this. Or maybe you haven't taken the quiz that I created. And if you haven't, then you're definitely going to want to find out what your spiritual zone of genius is. And you'll just uh, grab the link below this podcast. But either way, this will be valuable for you. So in these three archetypes of zone of genius, it really maps out different ways that you use your energy, different skills that you have, and different superpowers. So I'm just going to talk to you about the power words that come along with this, the power feelings rather. Because when we live a life based on our feelings, as highly sensitive women, we really take control of our life and come into our power. Because so often we're just afraid of our feelings and we're avoiding them and we're allowing power to be outside of us. So when we really own, oh, actually it's my feelings that creates my reality. We like to say it's our thoughts, but the thoughts create feelings and the feelings are the frequency that is speaking to the universe all the time. So I'm going to break down for you the three archetypes of the spiritual zone of genius And then the power feelings that are associated, and I want to show you how you can use this in your everyday life to motivate yourself, to inspire other people, to show up more powerfully, and how it can really be the foundation to a really beautiful, successful business by your design. So the first one is the inspired action taker. The inspired action taker is such a powerful archetype because it's those people who you're like, wow, how are they doing that? How are they getting all of that stuff done? And the secret to getting a lot of stuff done as an inspired action taker is to be focused on excitement. So the power feeling for the inspired action taker is excitement. And obviously other feelings are important and you can have core desired feelings and that's awesome. This isn't like a if only, if and only, it's a and conversation. So when you focus on excitement and what you are excited about, you actually show up more powerfully and you're able to fuel your own energy and be that inspiration for other people. And it's really, really so powerful. Um, One other tip I have for you, so if you have taken the quiz already, you'll know what I'm talking about, and if you're going to take it, this will be handy for you, is to recognize that you can really use a mantra around this. So you know that when you wake up in the morning, it's the most powerful time to set your intention for the day because you have no outside influence. It's a clean slate in a way. And I recommend in the morning creating a mantra and sort of a line of questioning for yourself that says, you know, if you're the inspired action taker, what am I excited about today? And get into the mojo of it and start to visualize the things you're excited about and cultivate that energy because it will help propel you forward for the whole day. Now, another one is the passionate creative. Now, this is like the multi-passionate entrepreneur, the person who has incredible ideas, who loves the creative process and really is such an asset because 
you need to have new amazing ideas. But part of the downside is that it can be challenging to move these ideas forward without a grounded plan. And a lot of passionate creatives just want to fly by the seat of their pants and just be passionate, which I totally understand. But the key power feeling for the passionate creative is alignment. It's alignment because we can get excited and feel passionate about a lot of different things, but we don't know that it's going to stay, right? So it's really easy to be like, oh, I'm passionate about this. Here's a new idea. Let me totally go for it. But then uh, it fizzles out. The important thing to remember is that it's got to be aligned to your bigger mission and your truth. So when you know, yeah, this is in alignment with me, this is all about uh, my values, right? My values are in alignment with this. The deep truth of who I am is in alignment with this. Then you can take that passion and fuel it with your creativity, which is all about being lit up. And It's just sort of like a reverse way to do it instead of, oh, I'm doing these things and now in hindsight I can look back and think, oh yeah, I started that because I was passionate at one point. But are you passionate now? Does it still align with who you are? Does it align with what you're meant to be doing in this world? And this is just a really good sort of GPS system for the passionate creative person. And then we move on to the intuitive empath. The intuitive empath is that juicy healer, the woman who everybody wants to be around and who is probably not getting paid enough money. Because as an intuitive empath, we are taught that that is our greatest asset and we must give it away for free. Now, there are a lot of nurses, a lot of healthcare providers, a lot of people who are really helping other people. But when we take a business online or we become an entrepreneur, we have to learn how to monetize these gifts. And the core feeling that we need to focus on as an intuitive empath is love. It's love. And one of the big things to focus on is love for yourself. So again, in the morning when you're waking up, Instead of starting to think, oh, all the things I need to take care of, all the things I need to do, it's about creating a practice of self-love and really coming back to nourishing yourself because I bet your life calls for you to be nourishing other people all day long. You've got to get into that habit of coming back to yourself and coming back to love because then you have so much love to give out to the world and you can create a much more sustainable business from this place. Now, I think I forgot to give you a morning ritual for the passionate creative. So we're talking about alignment for the passionate creative. So in the morning, it's really about questioning, how do I feel today? What is it I'm feeling today And how can I align my actions with my values? So how can I align my actions with my values and help to keep yourself on track by aligning to what you're doing now? You know, I'm excited about this project. It needs to get done. You know, let's get, let's really just follow through because sometimes follow through can be a little bit of a challenge for the passionate creative. So sorry to backtrack on you there, but I wanted to make sure that I dropped that in. Now, I'm hoping that you can start to see that understanding yourself on a deeper level and really tapping into the spiritual zone of genius will lead you to more of you unfolding. And that's the idea here. This isn't like, oh, great, now you know everything about yourself. Like any personality test or self-diagnosis type test, it's awesome. It's a part of you, right? It's a part of you. So if you already took the quiz, You see, oh yeah, okay, I can just use this in a way that really helps propel me forward. And again, if you haven't taken it, make sure to go to the link below and take it. So then you'll be like, oh yeah, I know what I'm, I know what Jai is talking about here. And I want you to start to question, you know, how can I align more of my life to these core feelings? How can I align more of my life to the truth of who I am? Because 
as you do, you move into the innate magic. And then something I teach in the She Rise Business School is called the four phase conscious business model. And without really understanding you, there is no conscious business model. It's about awareness through and through. The more awareness we have about who we are, where we're desiring to go, and who we need to be to get there, you know, the more powerful you are as you align to this new part of you, this new, more powerful part of you. So I've seen a lot of business models that teach X, Y, and Z and the real masculine part of business. And then I've seen a lot of business models that teach just the energetics. Like I'll teach you how to manifest and how to be in alignment with this. But what I love about the four phase conscious business model is it start to finish. It's holistic. It goes from, yes, your spiritual zone of genius all the way out to creating your sacred signature offer and moving it into the world in a way that feels really good to you. So I just wanted to mention that if you're wondering, well, how do I even use this or how does this apply to a business? It's really the foundation. And that's what I want you to see. I want you to understand yourself more and so that you can understand your gifts more. Your gifts are what we need for you to bring forward. That is what you are being called to share. If you have a business already, or if you're wanting to start one, I know that because you're listening to me and you're already at this point in this podcast, you're doing that because you want to help people and you're doing it because you feel a call and maybe you can't even explain it, but you just know that you're, that you're on the right track. And I just want to affirm that to you and say, heck yes. And the reason to do this deep inner work is because when we go deep, we can go wide. And I see so many people trying to take their message out without legs. And I want to, I want to give a foundational piece of this to you, which is why I created the quiz and why I did this specific podcast episode. So I hope this found you where you are, met you where you are, and you got some value from it. Um, In the next four weeks, I'm going to be doing a beautiful four-phase conscious business model series right here on the She Rise podcast. I'm going to be breaking down the four phases of the conscious business model and how you can apply them to your business right now and really create some massive shifts for yourself So make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and stick around for that. And I also will be sending it out in email as they are created. Um, If you do not follow me yet on Instagram, I have an awesome page for the She Rise podcast. It's called She Rise Podcast. And if you follow that, then you'll get privy to each episode as it is, um, as it drops. So, and you can always message me there. I love to hear about any aha moments. When you take the spiritual zone of genius quiz, let me know what you are. Let me know if you relate to it. And if you've already taken it, you can DM me over there as well. I'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much for being here. And if this is valuable to you and you have anybody who you think would really benefit from it, please do take a moment to share it. You can share the link to the quiz and or this podcast. And I would just be so honored because I feel such a call to share this work with the world. And I know what it feels like to be a highly sensitive woman with a call to serve and to feel like I have to do it everybody else's way or there maybe isn't another way. And I am here to say there is another way, a way that completely allows you to be lit up and also honors your magic and your intuition and also creates a thriving and abundant lifestyle. So I hope this is everything you needed and I can't wait to see you in the Conscious Business Model series and we will talk soon. So much love and remember... When you move, everything moves.